right, welcome to um, how to do image transfers. Um, one of the things that I am super duper excited about is the ability to put all of these words and things, words on things, words in things, um, into my paintings to make things have a, a bigger depth. Um, one, this is the project that started it for me, and let me show you basically the difference. I'm going to do kind of like a little overview about um, like what it can do for you, and then we're going to go through our 10 different uses for it. So this is an example of a paper. We've got colored papers um, that have words on them. Okay, And so one of the things, it would be just a drag to, um, to have to um, trace and base and try to get this aged look on your projects. Um, with a paintbrush, so it would just be a really, I don't, I would not enjoy painting if I had to do all this manually. So this is an example of what I was doing before, and I'll show you Grab these guys. Okay, so these projects have um, papers glued onto the background, and then I texturized on top of them. Okay, and um, and then the problem with that is if my paper is this antique color, which is what these are, if my paper's antique, then everything I paint on has to, that I put background words on, has to be the same color scheme. And you'll have seen it, if you follow um, any of my work at all, the, um, I have a million tons of projects painted on these so that I can use these background or collage papers. Okay, so that's the color of the background right here. And so normally I would just glue that. Now the difference is here, what I have done is I have used a reverse printed um, a reverse printed sheet of paper in laser ink, so it has to be a toner ink, <clears throat> and I have put it on top of the painting that I had already done, and then the texture is underneath the words as well, not on top, although you could put it on top. All right, so what this looks like, the difference between the two of them, is a sense of depth. Okay, so this one is the paper that's just glued down. This one is only anything on here that is a color. Okay, the white isn't ink. Um, printers don't print in ink, and I never would have thought of that until somebody pointed it out to me. So the, it just leaves it white wherever there is white. So this is the paper color, and then this is the color of my paint with some of this antiquing edging around it. <clears throat> and there's quite a strong antique edge at the corner, and that's why that looks like a line right there, because that's where my paper ended, and that's where the edge of my um, my color is. So, and what's nice about this is I've got a very, very faint um, feeling of an edge, very faint, not anything at all. Like, listen, you can hear it, and here you can't hear it catching the edge of my thumbnail. Okay, so what this is so cool, I'm going to show you why. I've got a million samples laying everywhere on which way. What's so cool about this, and then I did the clock and it was like crazy. I painted this the green color and then put a piece of paper, flipped it over, rubbed off all the paper, and um, then I had my green, my green surface with my clock on top. This is what changed it all for me, is being able to do this on a color background. Okay, so now what image transfer is, let's go over what that is. You take a piece of paper, okay, and you reverse print it. Then we're going to use very simple tools, Deco Arts, Deco Page Medium. We're going to put that on. I'll show you how to do it. We're going to place this on our surface and on our painted surface. And then we're going to rub it down, bray it down, and let it dry. And then we're going to remove the paper off, and the ink bonds with this material. Okay. So that's basically, and what that looks like when we're here, this is an exam, this is this clock pattern. Okay, so this is just my little sample -y test. Here's my paint color, and here's the printout was white. Okay, and then I took the paper off and revealed the color stayed behind, and I didn't finish it, but the color, st the color stayed behind, and it's on top of this paint color. So now I can do whatever paint technique I want there, and I can um, totally put my clock details and things like that on wherever I want them. So in the past, what, um, what image transfer to, has meant to me is this kind of a look. Well, and while I think that this is a really pretty look, 
it's a little too much and too busy for me. It looks a little bit messy. So what I like is when we get into here, we've got this subtle thing in the background with a strong emblem. Um, that's one of the things that made me happy is being able to just create enough of a background. Um, we've got, um, well, we've got lots of different things that are inspiring, but we'll try to keep this simple. I've done some experimenting um, <clears throat> with how much, and I've used watercolor paper, and I've used just little pieces of torn paper and different things, and just it played and experimented. And I recommend that as a way to get started. Um, and it didn't bother it to do it on top of the paper. So um, paper is cheap. You don't have to use a whole surface. And I'll show you one of my experimentation surfaces. Let's see, where are you? Okay, this is one of my experiments. Okay, somebody told me that you could do it on the back of transparencies, but I think the only way to do that is to use inkjet transparencies. This is laser, and laser does not work. Nothing came out. Then I thought, well, if you could do transparencies, maybe you could do vellum, and vellum did not work at all. And then this is photo paper. I tried doing it with the photo paper, and that did not work either. So the image transfer on just regular paper works brilliantly and it's super simple. Okay, you can do it in color, you can do it in black and white. Okay, that's a good way to experiment. <clears throat> Your tools are a sanding disc with rough sandpaper, decoupage medium, and a water bottle, and excitement and energy. That's it. Okay, surface ideas. You need papers. Um, we've got a variety of the papers. You know, we've got from clocks in colors to um, background words. We've got, we've got stuff coming, so you'll have lots of exciting things. I think one of the things I'm most excited about is um, the clock papers because this makes it possible to create a product that is store-bought quality because you can't, you know, every time I paint a clock, I've got some part of my line that's a shaky mess. You know, I can't get that precision on the numbers. So I can put this on my clock and I can hand paint my little flowers and I have got a finished piece that will rival anything you can buy in a store. Okay, so let's get started on a simple project. Say I want to make some, some um, signs for a craft show. Okay, so I've got my essentials wood surface, which is just a MDF surface. I've got my words printed out in a black font backwards. I'm going to put my words onto the piece and then paint a couple sprigs of flowers, antique my edges, put holes, a knot, and then we're done. Okay. The very first thing I want to do is decide if I want to put this over here. It says um, ring the bell. Let's see, it says ring the bell. If no one answers, then pull weeds, which I think is just a funny, funny, funny little phrase. I could put this way down centered over here in this corner with a little bell here, like a little cowbell, and then maybe some flowers coming up out of here, or some weeds even. I could put it smack dab in the center, which I think is what I may do just right now. And so the first thing I want to do is give myself a line. I'm going to get my gray um, Ghost Rider pencil lead. All right, and I'm going to make a line across, okay, and then I'm going to take the same thing I'm going to do, let me lay this on here so I can see, I'm going to give myself a line across the bottom of my paper. Okay, and then I will put my words, when I lay them down, I will put them down straight. We'll cut this paper off. All right, I'm going to fold my paper in half and line up my lines. Okay, the one thing I want to do is get rid of this line right here where I'm going to put glue. So I could have just done it out to either side. Anything that you put under the decoupage medium will be permanent. Including rough erase, erasing lines, right? Okay, so we'll take our thingy bobber here, we'll lay it down, erase just a little bit more. The neat thing about, whoops, 
The neat thing about doing the transfer is I could actually put these words over the top of one of my papers. So you can transfer in layers. All right, so I want to see about how big I want this. And so we'll just put this out there. You want smooth. What I found is wherever I clump my medium is where my letters won't stick. And one thing that you do need to be willing to accept is that it's possible that every single stinking thing isn't going to stick. And so you might have to go in and fix it. Okay, so don't, don't be expecting absolute perfection because that's not going to happen. Is that big enough? Okay. So you press it down in the middle. And I found our paint savers have a perfectly smooth little top to them. They're not, um, they're slightly domed, so it makes a nice little um, small brayer. Okay, I think I missed underneath these. So I stuff some medium up underneath that corner. You don't want to put the edges of the paper into the medium. You just want to give it good rubbing contact. Get rid of any bubbles. Bubbles are where things will not um, will not be sticking. And it's not really a friction based thing, it's more of a contact based thing, so you want to make sure you don't have a lot of glue. If you have excess, you can sweep it away. Um, but don't seal down the edges of the paper because it will bond with that. This is good, strong glue product. Now we'll set this aside and we'll let it dry. All right, this is a surface that I'm prepping to do a little blue delft. This is an example of blue delft um, with paint all over it. Um, but a little blue delft house numbers board. Okay, so I'm taking these small essential surfaces and I painted everything white. And then I'm going to transfer my numbers onto the middle of my surfaces. Okay, and so then we'll do the same exact thing. I've got this painted and dried. That's the important step. And so you can see behind. We want to make sure that we know where straight is. So I'm going to take my pencil on the back of the letters. Let's line them up using the actual T part of my T square. Some letters are funny in that they have highs and lows. Okay, so that's about right. And so, and actually, I think I'm slightly off. Of course, we've known that for years, right? Okay, that's a little better. And of course, we don't want. No, that's the lines on there. All right, so then we go on to our surfaces. And the same thing here, we want to decide you know, how big is that and how, where do we want it. And I think I want it about a half an inch up. Okay, so I'd measure my half inch. And if I make a line not near, And then we take our letters and we drip, 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 cut them out. And we're going to put a little bit of our thing. What I love about this is I would have thought that it would have been like a lot of this medium. And it's not. It's just that little bit. And it dries clear. You want to make sure that if you have texture that you get in all the texture places. Okay, and so now take my number one. And we'll make sure I'm straight. Okay, and we'll 
start in the middle and bray our way up. Now I've got these, did you notice that I have these numbers printed in blue? So I'm going to be able to print the, paint them, paint my stuff, and then I'm just going to antique and crackle around the edges. Okay, so get a good contact and move on to the next letter. It couldn't be simpler, no tracing, no basing, none of that. You rub it on, you rub it off. Okay, one of the most interesting things that we thought of in the meantime about image transfers is this is an inkjet, so this isn't laser, this is just what your pattern packet would come, um, what you'd print it out of your, um, out of your computer with. Um, now, when we send you pattern packets, they're usually printed on a laser printer, so you couldn't do this unless you printed it out yourself. But if you wet, I'll just wet an area here, wet your surface, <clears throat> pretend it's already painted, or pretend it's not painted and you put this guy down on there. I'll just do a little section of him. And you rub, rub a dub dub. If you have a detailed pattern like this, and you want to put your transfer on, this, let's see if you can see it, has got a perfect amount of graphite line for painting and base coating. Now obviously I would base coat out those details, but I wouldn't have to transfer every single line. I wouldn't have to trace it at all. So you can, and you can make it a little darker by spending a little bit more time with a little more water. But what a great idea to use your pattern and flip it over and make your, your image transfer for your pattern packet, for your line drawing. Okay, so another surface, say we have Say we're wanting to make this cornucopia go on this clock. Okay. Then what we'll do, get that sanded a little bit. What if I wanted to make my cornucopia be, what if I wanted my lines that were on this pattern to be the lines that I painted within, like i.e. I wouldn't have to trace any of that. Now I probably wouldn't do it in black. I would probably do it more in a brown in this case, and then I would do my painting within the brown lines. Okay, and then what you do to do that, is you would find your actually first thing you do, you cut off some of that excess paper. Now this won't be light. Let's see, that's going to be. This won't be light like that other was. This is going to be the exact, it, it takes the ink and leaves the ink or the toner on your piece. So it's not actually um, changing it or making it into any other color. It is just simply using whatever you see. So it's that what you see is what you get moment. All right, we'll place that and go for a straight kind of look. It's a really warm day today. I'm going to be curious to see how that affects what we've got going here. I can turn the air on, but not while I'm filming. So it's real hot in here. I can. The reason I'm bringing that up is this is drying um, to a sticky phase really fast. So we just need to move quickly enough so that you're working with the wet medium. All right. To do a clock with texture under it, I've got this base coated with the antique white. Uh, that's not true, bleach sand. And then I'm going to rebase it with bleach sand. My dirty brush, because I just dipped it into antique white. Okay, I can totally see that little um, Parisian clock face as a base for a lot of flowers, roses, everything. So I can just get this. If I was working for bazaars and shows and things like that and doing um, shows, I would be all over this. And maybe that's what made me so excited is I could see how, like, look how fast this background goes. Um, it's a five minute background maybe, especially if you had like four or five of these lined up. And you, those of you that are those, um, the one stroke rose painters and the fast stroke rose painters, I can paint a rose in a minute. 
I can paint three roses in three minutes, and so there you go. Now I'm done um, after I get this on here, so it's a little drying time. You get four or five of them, you're good to go. Okay, now I could dry this, but I think I'm just going to go straight onto it with my texture crackle that's been tinted. Now, this is going to make the clock hit and skip just a little bit. Um, you know, I've never put it on wet. I hope the stuff still cracks. It's interesting. This is how um, we make all these little discoveries, is you try things like this when you're filming a video, and, and you're like, oh, hey, look, maybe this will maybe this will work. Okay, now we let all this dry completely, thoroughly, and we'll sand it, and then we'll apply our clock face. All right, I think our number is ready. Um, I blow dry these. I, you are much better off if you allow yourself overnight to dry. But I have been doing these in like 10 minutes, and I've not been having a problem. I have had a little bit of problems. So if you don't want any problems, and I'm going to take my, my fingers and then with water on it, or I can use my, my overkill spray bottle. My little one gave up on me. I think I killed it with how many transfers I've done. And you're just going to rub the paper off. Okay, see how it's already off that edge? Can you tell? Let's take it right on off of there. And you just make a little pile of your shavings here. It's quite easy to do. And the ink will have bonded with I mean, look at how beautiful that is. That, that is precision done lettering that you didn't have to do yourself. And it's clean and it's sharp and it's, it's not like, um, okay, so I want to go on record as not having a single problem with anything that is hand painted looking, but some stuff, if you put the pristine with the hand painted, it's going to elevate the one and not just not detract from the other. It is, it is good to perfect some things. Okay, now what always happens, and this always happens, is you're going to get some, um, when it dries, that very first time, you're going to have that last little bit to take off. You just re-wet it and go to town on it. Okay, and then at a certain point when you feel like you don't have any fuzzies, and you'll know what I mean when you try it, when you don't have fuzzies, go ahead and give it a coat of matte varnish and then it will, um, there won't be any fuzzies on there. All right, we're going to use our sanding. I like this one because it has replaceable sanding pads and, um, and it actually has a little razor blade in there and then it has for tearing your paper and stuff and then it has a little finger grip and that hard surface behind makes it get good contact. Oops, really good contact. Roughing up that paper helps a lot. Okay, then we're going to mist it. And notice how it starts getting transparent. And we'll go over here and work on the edge. Ta-da! Okay, I don't know if you feel like this is magic, but I do. So this would be an example. If I had anything peel off anywhere, then what I could do is just go ahead and take my black and I could base coat over it. And so these edges, what I found too is, ooh, I almost didn't have any ink over there. I don't think I had the adhesive because that peeled right off. Um, do make sure that you get your adhesive. I'm doing this a little bit kind of haphazardly because we're just doing it for examples to show you. But do make sure you have the medium under everything evenly or it will make you sad. So then you just rub all that stuff off until you get down to your base, and then that is going to eat off the edge. Yeah, see what happens? Okay, so this is a very good example right here. I'm losing my N. Now I can just lay it back over, trace it, and I can put it back. That's not a problem. I had a piece of, I had a piece of my autumn break off over here on the M, and so I just went back in with a Sonoma color, and or not Sonoma, that's the wrong brand. Um, I went back in with the um, soft black and um, totally just patched it. So, but how much nicer not to have to trace and base. Okay, so see how that just comes right off the edge. It's just brilliant. 
and then I will be ready to paint my little flowers. You can use a soft rag if you decide you want to do that. And you just keep working it. Alright, I've got this letter in a place where I think I'm happy with it. And I'll take a brush. I'm going to brush on a little bit of matte varnish. Just, I want that letter under something. Oh, and you know what you could use too? I keep forgetting about this. Is faux finish medium. Okay, so you get that there. You could use faux finish medium. Um, I had it out here somewhere. Uh, glazing medium. All right, I've got my medium basically dry. I sand that. Wipe off the dust. Okay, I think I'm pretty dry. And then we'll get out our brush. Same same thing for every one of this one. Our stuff is going to go side to side. There's a little bit of prep though that goes with putting the cloth paper on. Okay. The very first thing you want to do is cut out the circle in the middle so that you can center. Okay. The next thing that you want to do is cut a straight line as close to your edge without eating up the edge. Like really close to the edge on four sides. And what that's going to do to you is that's going to show you where your papers, if they're lined up, it would help if I put my glasses on. You'll be able to feel if your papers are actually lined up. Glasses. So all four sides. And my center. And my center. I'm going to get cut. And then I'll use smaller scissors to cut out the middle. All right, we'll use our medium. And whew, just go ahead and give everything a nice, even coat. Remember, not too thick. And remember, you're going to want your edges on there, so make sure you have an even coat next to your edge. That may take a little bit of juggling to do because our tendency is to want to go thin next to the edge. So, and then I'm also, of course, 9,000 degrees up here, so I'm drying at the same rate, and it's going to dry from the outside in. So if you are in a dry climate, make sure that you are um, putting yourself in an environment for success. I know a lot of our friends in Arizona and Texas and all that have a hard time with that during the hot season. So I am putting the medium on, so I put it on kind of thickly, and because I have texture, so this is over a background, right? Because I have texture, I'm going back and making sure that I'm even and not too juicy, but yet even to my edges. Okay, I do not want a big bunch of stuff under there, and I want no ridges. I put on one clock earlier and I left a ridge of paint, so it's really important you have an even application. I'm on my nonstick mat, so I don't care if I get this glue on there because I know it'll come off. Okay, I'm going to talk this dry, right? All right, and you lay that puppy on there, and then you can feel on your edges that I laid that down perfectly. Yay! All right, so I'm going to take my little... all the way over to the edges. Starting from the middle, working our way out, but quickly, quickly, because we're drying at the rate that we're talking inside out, that way you don't end up with bubbles. Okay, and smooth anything out that bubbles. Okay, so like where your medium is pooling or anything like that, you just go ahead and Okay, so how long would you have to work on a clock to make it be perfect? That's my question to you. Okay, I think I have big contact everywhere. 
So as I'm getting ready to do the butterfly, it occurs to me that what you could do with the butterfly, this, all of this detail work and making all of these little things right here, that's the piece that we don't like so much. Um, but, so my first thought was paint this in yellow. But my second thought is trace the outline onto your piece and then lay, cut this out and lay that on there. But I think you could probably lay it on there and get it fairly well lined up and base under with the yellow. That's an, another concept. But you could also, let's just give this a, in. so you could very easily do this on white as an undercoat. Let's under, let's put that on there. More medium. I've gone through about a jar of this in a week. It goes really far, which is really nice. And get that on there all the way to the edge. I hope you're getting ideas from this. That is the goal of this video. You can make dominoes out of these. You can have so much fun. Oops. If it shifts, just slide it on back. But do it quickly. You don't want to let it sit there. I don't know at what point, um, at what point it's too late. But I imagine some of you will find out. I haven't done that. I've tried peeling these off early. And you can actually peel off the paper a little bit early. Now let's, while we're waiting on those to dry, I'm crackling my numbers right now. So I'm putting on a couple of coats of level one of the crackle. I'm on my third. So we'll sand my dry. You feel for cold is what you feel for. The magic is watching the paper get soft and then the design kind of coming up through. And this is lifted right there, which tells me Oh, there's a hole right there. That's important. I'm going to try rubbing with the other hand since I've done so much rubbing my hands. I have no fingerprints anymore. Time to switch to the rag technique. See how nice and crisp those lines are. looks exactly like I trace them in a big black ink pen. So this took like all the work out of doing this project right here. It's all in the tracing and the basing. Oh, no, not basing. But I could just do washes of color instead of base coating. Do it in a pen and ink style. It's pre-inked for me. Bob's your uncle. Look at how brilliant that is. All right, on our clock words papers, we have embellishments that you can do, and we have that clock words book embellishments. Now, what I can do with this is I can decide, say, let's go on this one right here. Say I've got this, and I've, um, this was my one of my samples where I could see if a clock would actually come off onto here. Say I wanted to put a word or this Eiffel Tower, which is another one of those examples of things I would never, ever paint in my life. So I'll take the medium. Ah, I got paint in my medium. That's interesting. Let's try it and see. Way too much. Take my medium, go right up the middle of my clock. Not too thick. I'm getting a little bit generous here. And keep it out of that hole. Okay, and I can just line that up. 
6 and 12. Laying that down there. And now I've added an embellishment onto my piece. I could do little butterflies here and there. I could do, look at here, we've got these. Look at how, this is what excited me. This is my aha moment. Look at the microscopic detail. This is three inches. It's the shading on the clock hands is there. Um, it is absolutely brilliant. This is when I decided that you could indeed paint um, the detail from the butterfly onto there. This is just another version of the butterfly. Um, excellent. So exciting. All right, I'd like to talk about class submissions. Um, by the way, anybody that wants to use my projects for classes, um, you're welcome to. You're um, supposed to buy the pattern packet to go and distribute to the class. So that's like the rule. And we do give teacher discounts for buying um, pattern packets so that it's not a burden for you. Anyway, um, that aside, can you imagine taking this project right here to class, going through the class, slip slap the background colors, do the texture like we did on that other clock that I, I have drying right now. Um, this is a stamp. This is a stamp uh, that I made. You could stroke it as well. But applying the papers, teaching the technique, handing them all a piece with the word on it, finishing the one leaf, and then leaving with this finished project in just four hours. I mean, think about how like mind-boggling it is to get all of this kind of depth and detail in into a class project. The amount of actual painting is here, and here, and here. Okay, so clock the same thing. I got my clock face drying. Maybe we're gonna paint little roses on it. So I've got, you know, three or four little roses right here. You teach them how to do this um, technique in the background while they're practicing their roses, you put that aside and you've got your, um, you practice, come back here, peel off your paper, do all that kind of stuff, and then you paint right, paint roses right on it and you're done. You could have a two hour, you could have a two hour make it, take it for that. Um, you could do little butterfly pins. Um, you could do like, the, like the world is like open because this just is that big a time saver. All oh, right. On my numbers here, I've got my my number going on. This is my number two. On numbers, imagine doing. Remember when um, we all had um, perpetual calendars? Imagine. Remember we didn't we didn't want to do all the project maybe because it had so many numbers and letters and things like that. Imagine doing a chore chart that had the chores lined out for you. Imagine doing. Um, Oh, I am having a fun, they call this an art attack, right? Okay, imagine taking clear chalkboard coating, so, and you make a chalkboard, we'll call it yellow, and imagine that you put a um, chore chart lines, so you get it on your computer, and you do your lines, and it says, you know, John married, blah, 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 and then there are chores with a little checkbox. Then when you're all finished with your project, you put clear chalkboard coating on top of it and then any color becomes your chalkboard surface. So you use the image transfer to put all those perfectly spaced lines and everything on there. And then you put a little painted emblem in the corner or whatever. And then you do this um, to make it um, be like chalkboard. And you can take it one step further and you can take your antique paint, uh, your magnetic paint, sorry, magnetic paint, three coats underneath your paint then you put your color on top, then you put your image transfer on top, then you paint your thing, this, this medium on top, and now you have a magnetic, erasable, chalkboard, instant image transfer project. Ah, oh, that's just awesome. So, I mean, there's just so much you can do. It just, and it's stuff that maybe you avoided before because of the work of it. Um, we've taken out a lot of that work and we're making things just open, open in the world up. All right, so we've got our butterfly. We've got a little sand. A little water. I like it better a little bit wetter. It seems to do a little bit of the softening work for you. Okay, I'm trying to find different fingers to rub with. That's the only thing. If you do a whole bunch of these at one time, then it's a little bit rubby, but definitely a soft cloth. You know, one of those small baby... Um, baby washcloths 
that would be soft enough and fine enough. Okay, look at how fast it. Okay, no effort at all. And if you don't bring your medium all the way out, then you don't have to get rid of the paper. Wherever you put your medium, that's where you have to put take the paper away. So if you don't put it everywhere, you won't have to get rid of it everywhere. All right, so if I take my newly done pattern and I fill in my spaces just like if I had a line drawing, just using a little wash of color. If I get it on there and I don't want it on there, then what could I do? I could absolutely just go ahead and um, base black. Now I'm jumping the gun a little bit because this is drying and I'm seeing a little bit of fuzz. But if I didn't see the fuzz wet, more than likely I'm not going to see the fuzz when I put my varnish on because I have varnished over a couple of these things with um, with fuzzies on them and they've been perfectly clear. Okay, so you can totally use that to trace all of your details. Let's go into a shading brush. Ooh, that brush needs to be clean. Go with a little bit stronger paint. You've got just all of that detail right there. Oops. Put my finger in it and mop it. Okay, same thing out here. Once again, going to the make it, take it, going to the classes, going to any of that kind of stuff, you have totally got yourself a super simple way to get a perfectly done little project. You can decide which part of the elements that you want to spend the time on. And it just gives you just more, more deciding, you know, more decisions in your park. Okay, I can feel a little bit of falling or swelling here and there, so I think I've got stuff that's just not dry yet. Can't take that off. Let's see if we've got this. And that's cold. You can always tell if something's wet if it's cold. Okay. And this was, oh, this is my example, actually, my example board right here. Um, not perfectly done, first time doing a clock, that kind of thing. Well, the, my first clocks were these other little guys like this and this. Um, but these were just experiments. And this is the back of a CD. So we've got these little discs, and this is a disaster. This thing has been laying around forever, glued on here. Um, but We've got the disc to make the hole the right size to take clockwork, so now you can make any CD into a surface. What a great recycle or upcycle gift. All right, so this was my example. Um, this side you can see has some fuzzes on it, and this side you can see is clear. This actually is the same level. I just put a coat of matte varnish on here and it just dried clear. So you can decide when you're done, or you can go back and you can keep working it and pull up the last little vestiges of fuzz. And a little bit is just a matter of whether or not you're impatient and you feel like doing that extra little bit. And obviously, if you were gonna do this for a piece that you're painting, not just these experiments, then you would obviously take the time to do it right. Uh, and just that's just taking that extra one step of peeling off the rest. All right, we're on the clock. Sand this off, not sand it off, and you just really want to break the back, like um, finish of the paper. I definitely need a new squirt bottle. That is, um, let's see, it's heavy duty pesticides, cleaners, and other, I don't think I want that. Look at that, isn't that fantastic? Okay, you can see where my water's not. It just soaks into that paper. Okay. And remember, this is on that faux finish background. So some of my details 
may um, escape because um, of the rough texture. Okay, be prepared for that when you're going to do rough texture. Look at how cool that looks with that Eiffel Tower in that. Oh, 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 oh. super de duper. I am ready to start using my paper towel. My hand has officially given up. And keep in mind that your hand will be fine because my hand has been doing this for hours now, doing all these examples and samples and stuff. Okay, so I'm losing just a little bit of my edge detail up here. Okay, and I'm going to call that, now that's the area where I told you that um, I was expecting to lose a little detail because that's where we keep our medium thin, remember? So um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are um, getting that medium really even over there and that could also be where I have some texture. Okay, so that could be two things going on there, but I'm okay with both scenarios because this, I, I tend to paint everything in a faded kind of antiqued way, but if you want it solid, you know what to do. I've been through the process and talked about it. So tell me, how exciting is it that you can do this? This still amazes me. You know, and I think it's just this switch behind doing, having something doing the hard work for me that has got me so excited. Um, you know, I, the layering effects, yeah, that's cool. But this, this whole idea of I don't have to paint the clock. Time to switch to a different spot on my paper towel. paper. Okay, remember our high points are we want to make sure that we are keeping, we want to use a toner base. We want to um, use even texture, even amount of our medium. We want to make sure that we um, cut our paper down. We want to not rub our fingerprints off. What else? Um, Use your T-square and mark things to get your letters on straight. That's a real important one. Let's see. Other high points. Just have frickin' fun with it. Don't be afraid of it. Do some samples on some watercolor paper, and you are going to be as in love with this as I am. We've got lots and lots of papers on the website that you can buy in color and in black and white. So we've got the clock faces already done for you. Um, they're really, really, really affordable. Um, this will just peel right off there and we can rub that. Okay, not finished, done yet, but can you imagine now I'm just going to paint my little roses down here and put it in a cute little easel and Bob's your uncle. <laughs> 